overlooking Huntsville and the Tennessee Valley from the top of Montecito. You're watching Way 31 Hometown News. It's 5.30 on a Friday morning. Yep, you made it to Friday. I'm Erin Dacey. <laughs> and I'm Justin McFarland. January the 8th is the date right now. So let's check in with Liz Cosgrove. Not going to feel like January, at least not today. And that's okay because I think we all deserve a little bit of a warm up compared to what we dealt with earlier this week. We had a few showers that moved through during the overnight. So you'll notice that the roads are a little wet out there, but those rain showers have moved now to the north and east. And what we're left with is mostly cloudy skies. And with a southeasterly wind in place, we're staying nice and mild into the lower 50s across the board for the Tennessee Valley. So things are looking up in our forecast. Now, as we head out towards Phoenix, a little bit of a different story. They're picking up on a few drops of rain around the city here. And if you are heading out towards the championship to root on Alabama, we'll pick up on a few showers early Friday morning. We'll see more sunshine as we head throughout Saturday. Cloud cover rolls back in Sunday due to another system, but we're not looking at anything really coming our way. Maybe a stray shower at best. Otherwise, temperatures will be into the mid 50s and 60 degrees for game day on Monday. So the weather forecast looking good out there for us. We're going to see more rain than what Phoenix will see. We'll talk more about our next system coming our way in just a few minutes. Let's send it back over to Aaron and Justin. Thank you, Liz. Way 31 is keeping an eye on traffic conditions for you this morning, including road closures from the Way 31 Traffic Center. Huntsville Public Works has closed Drake Avenue from South Memorial Parkway to L&N &N Drive. The road is being milled and resurfaced. Work is expected to be finished sometime today. One lane is kept open. Do expect delays there. Let's take a live look if we can this morning. This is from the hospital district around Governor's Drive. As you can see, traffic moving along just fine this morning. The closer we get to 7 o'clock, the more traffic will start to build up out there as folks start to report for work. If you have anything that could slow you down out there on the roads, we'll be sure to let you know from the Way 31 Traffic Center. Of course, we'll tell you online as well. Way 31, or excuse me, waytv.com. You can reach us at trafficway31 on Twitter and traffic at waytv.com. Continuing coverage this morning on a tragic story out of Cincinnati. It's got ties to the Tennessee Valley. A Trinity couple allegedly shooting up heroin in their daughter's hospital room this morning. The mother has died. The father's behind bars, though, after being revived. Way 31's Carla Fields joins us live in the studio with all the details. Carla. Good morning. Now, as bizarre as this story is, experts say that it's really was not surprising since people addicted to heroin will shoot up pretty much any time and anywhere. But the couple's pastor says that they were just in church Sunday praying for their infant daughter's recovery. Just about now, nothing really surprises me. I mean, it is shocking where it happened, how it happened. You're right there with your child. Hamilton County, Ohio's heroin task force leader and the county coroner were stunned about what happened Thursday at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Wesley and Marianne Landers from Trinity, Alabama, found overdosed in the same room with their sick child. The family had traveled to Cincinnati this week for their seven-month daughter Lucy's surgery. Her uh, esophagus never developed and um, so she couldn't swallow had difficulty breathing, so they were able to go in and take some cartilage <laughs> out of the ribs to reconstruct her esophagus. Now their pastor, Dennis Terry, telling Way 31 he had no idea the couple even had a drug addiction. He says the couple attended church in Trinity every Sunday. A prayer vigil was held Thursday for the couple and their daughter. Love their two children. They have two precious daughters um, and uh, just, a, just a sweet couple. And, and we're, I'm just in shock over this. According to court documents, when it was found, Wesley had a loaded handgun in his pocket and a syringe in his arm. Two more syringes were found on the bathroom counter. Across the United States, the battle against heroin addiction continues with no end in sight. When somebody's in the throes of an addiction, um, I think they really lose a lot of their priorities. They lose a lot of who they are and become somebody else, something else. Now today, Hamilton County Heroin Task Force will try to track down the drug drugs back to the seller, and there may be a possible charge of involuntary manslaughter. The child's father is expected in court today and could face a weapons charge since he had a handgun when he was found. Justin? Thank you so much, Carla. We'll keep an eye on that story. 5.33 is the time, and news from our Sam Mountain newsroom this morning. A reward is being offered for in DeKalb County after a robbery leads to two suspects on the run. The shooting happened Wednesday night in a home along County Road 478. That's in Kilpatrick. 
The homeowner, 62-year-old Ronnie Roos, was shot in the leg. He's recovering after surgery. The only description of the suspects are two Hispanic men. Their faces were covered at the time. The DeKalb County Sheriff's Office is telling people, please be careful. Settling to me uh, when you're not even safe in your own home. They were sitting there watching TV when they heard a knock on the door, and he went up to open his door. Make sure your doors is locked, all of them, and uh, do not let nobody in your house if you don't know them. It's that simple. I mean, we live in different times than when I was raised up in. A thousand dollar reward is being offered for the arrest of the two people wanted in this shooting. A man saved his bedridden grandmother from a house fire in Northwest Huntsville yesterday. This fire happened on Laurel Drive just off University. 24-year-old Xavier Ellison tells Way 31 he was sleeping when the fire began. He was able to get his 65-year-old grandmother and make a run for it out of the burning house. Picked up, man, I put over my shoulder and carried out the house for the smoke got black and that was it. Fortunately, neither Xavier nor his grandmother were hurt. An investigation into how the fire started is still ongoing. Well, a memorial service was held last night for a young man that was killed in a car crash in Morgan County. Just four days after their family lost, his family is hoping to use this loss to teach lessons. 19-year-old Dylan Allen died in a crash on early Monday on Highway 67 near Somerville. Dylan was a passenger in the car that collided with the truck. Another person in the car, 22-year-old Carla Fulton, also died. The driver, Jacob Lavelle, is still in critical condition. Dylan's family finally remembers the young man and wants this tragedy be, to be a reminder for you and your loved ones. He was an avid hunter, loved fishing, you know, and he was just a good old boy, you know. Everybody thought the world of him. A great guy. Grab the person beside us to hold him tight, to let him know how we feel. I don't care how much you're in a hurry. You grab them, you hug them, you kiss them goodbye. It might be the last time you see them. My gosh. The family has set up a fund me, a GoFundMe, or a fund, rather, at the Redstone Credit Union in order to help pay for funeral expenses. From Way 31's Decatur Newsroom, the Chief of Police in Decatur is retiring after 40 years of service. Chief Ed Taylor first joined the department in 1974 as a patrol officer. He was promoted to chief in 2010. I, uh, I care about this community and uh, uh, I intend to uh, uh, continue to do everything I can to improve uh, the circumstances for our citizens and, and our community as well. Chief Taylor tells Way 31 he's been thinking about retiring for a while so he can spend more time with his wife and grandkids, but as he mentioned there, his retirement doesn't mean he is through with his service to Decatur.